I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Right now, a protest over this highly charged surveillance video ends with arrest tonight. Last month, a woman drove off dragging a Dalton officer before police shot and killed her. Let's get right to Charlie Demar live in the south suburbs. Charlie. Erica, good evening and Chicago Road is back open tonight. Police did have it shut down for some time as Village Hall is just on the other side, about a block from where we're standing right now. There was a protest tonight for the shooting death of Alexis Wilson. Protesters tonight still have a lot of questions over that incident. Cell phone video provided to CBS2 shows some of those arrests. Dalton police says the crowd crossed barriers and police lines that were set up and that's when the arrests occurred. Protesters we spoke with say they were peacefully demonstrating on the sidewalk. It all happened near 142nd in Chicago, just a block or so from Village Hall. Several police departments were called in, including state police. We spoke with Camilla Williams, who says she was one of the people detained and released tonight. He told me um, I was arrested for disturbance. So I got some disturbing charges and, you know, I feel like my rights to protest was infringed on. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. Police were called to a fast food restaurant in July where workers said Alexis Wilson in the red van wouldn't leave and was threatening workers with a weapon in the drive through. The passenger in the car got out, but Wilson did not. Surveillance video shows that she drove off and dragged one of the officers. That's when an officer started shooting, killing a 19 year old. She eventually crashed into a bike shop. We are protesting to find out what happened to Alexis Wilson? Accountability. That's why we're here. We're going to continue to be here. We're going to continue to stand for justice. No arrest is going to run us away. And then it also meant it looks like it was um, 700,000 appropriated uh, for the MFT funds, but I did want to circle and talk with uh, Chris because I'm not sure if I saw it or not in the MFT budget. So I, my motion will be to table it to Finance Committee. Second. Okay. It's been motion and second. Uh, Call the roll. I'm sorry, who's second? Of an ordinance regarding public assembly for the village of Dalton. Um, I'm gonna just start this off and then I will give the floor to Chief Collins. So um, we've been having some issues in town as it relates to groups of people assembling in our town. And we have to figure out a better way to protect ourselves and also the residents of Dalton. So um, we put in this before you guys to consider having them pull permits in order to assemble here in Dalton so things don't get out of hand. I'm going to give the floor to Chief Collins so he can elaborate and you guys can ask questions um, as relates to what we're trying to do. Chief Collins. I'm hoping that everyone has a copy um, of this proposed ordinance. Um, and I want to make one thing very clear. This is not in any way to prevent uh, lawful assembly. Um, we do not want to uh, be in any position to um, stop or prevent anyone from exercising their, their First Amendment rights. But what has been happening is these uh, assemblies that take place have been without notice, and it is a huge drain and a tax on the resources of the police department. Um, and all we are really asking is that we be notified of the place and time and the approximate number of people that will be assembling. Um, with that, we can properly staff so that we can make sure that not only the participants are protected, but also any other public members or anyone else that may be in attendance but not active participants, just to make sure that we have enough safe numbers to keep everybody safe. Without that notice, we have a very hard time staffing um, any assembly like this. Um, what takes place is 
we pull officers from their normal patrols, which pulls officers out of their neighborhoods so that they have to attend to um, any assembly or any crowd that has, assembly, that has assembled. And then we struggle to get officers to actually come in so that we can put them back in the neighborhoods or man these crowds. So all we're asking is just for some notice, and it actually has to be five days notice. And without that, the assembly, the assembly cannot take place. However, with the notice, the assembly takes place. And with there's no other action, it is allowed to take place. However, the chief of police does have the authorization to put a no on the assembly. And if that happens, if that happens, the chief of police has to have an alternate date and time, an alternate date and time that it has to be acceptable to the organizers of the event. And not only that, if an alternate date and time and location takes place, it has to be comparable to the original location that was requested. For instance, if it was requested on Chicago Road at some type of assembly on Chicago Road, I cannot arbitrarily say, no, you cannot assemble here. You have to assemble in an alley on some off street. I cannot do that. It has to be something comparable to it so that we are not trampling on your, on your civil liberties, but we want to make sure that we properly staff the event so that you have enough police officers to keep everyone safe. What that also calls for is that if the event becomes large or too large, uh, with more people or more participants showing up than expected, the police also have authorization to form a path to make sure that any buildings, their entrances and exits are not blocked due to safety reasons, so that there is enough room for any emergency vehicles or any uh, ambulance that needs to uh, come for any type, of, any type of medical incident. Or if the party has become so large that it is inside in the street or blocking some sort of street, we have authorization to make room in the street or also block certain streets so that the participants have enough room to exercise um, what they are assembling for. So again, I wanna stress that this is in no way, uh, any type of way to prevent uh, a lawful assembly. However, we, there are some rules that we would like to make sure that everybody abides by, by giving the police department at least five days notice before that event takes place. And I'd be happy to field any questions about this. Chief, I have a question. This is Trustee Brown. Would there be a limited number of participants on that uh, permit? There, there is no number limiting the amount of participants. If it is 25 participants, 50 participants, all that we want to know is that we have uh, the notice that an assembly will take place and an approximate number of people so that we know how to staff this uh, particular type of event. Does that answer your question? Yes. Hey, Chief, if I can be recognized. Yeah, Trustee, yeah. Okay, uh, Chief, I, so my, my read of this, I think there is a similar ordinance passed by passed in Chicago, uh, the large city uh, versus what we have. And I believe there's some ongoing litigation around different components that um, could lead to lawsuits. That aren't, do you know of any other com communities or have any additional information or is my information uh, correct or can you kind of give me a direction on that? The, um, as far as surrounding community, communities, I'm unaware of the surrounding communities if they have anything in place. However, I am aware of other communities that have a similar ordinance in place, but it uh, requires a, uh, a gathering of 25 or more for that particular organizer to first pull a permit and also have to pay the salary of the police officers who will be attending uh, to keep that crowd safe. This, this ordinance does not reflect that. Uh, we're not requiring anyone to pay the salaries of the police officers that are there. We're only requiring a, uh, a reasonable notice so that we can properly staff. But as far as any legalities of it, I would have to leave that up to our uh, attorneys who can probably uh, better uh, quote on that. I have a question, this is Trustee Brown. Would five days be a stretch? Because a lot of these people are protesting, I guess, and they hear about it the day and then they just come out that day. So I don't know, if, are these things post? I don't know if they're posted what they're protesting about. I mean, I look up and then you just see a crowd of people, so. Sometimes they are put on social media and um, and from time to time we are able to see what is out on social media, um, but there's really not enough leeway. Sometimes we see things same day of just hours prior to, um, but five days would be plenty of time for us to actually um, properly staff, but it also gives enough time for the uh, chief of police to respond. The uh, chief of police is required to respond within 48 hours of receiving the notice if some other event, let's say another event is planned for the space that they want to occupy, then obviously we cannot have um, the one thing going on in the same space that someone has already been permitted for, um, or if there are any type of uh, public safety risk poses. Um, so 48 hours, I have to respond, but five days should be plenty enough time. Oh, I'm happy to recognize. I, I think, uh, I think uh, I'm just speaking for myself. I'm just not in agreement with this ordinance. I think that the recent protests or the recent things that we've seen uh, is kind of been self-inflicted. Um, so I think we, we in the administration need to relook at the approach to certain things. And if we're worried about manpower and hours and stuff like that, you know, we're spending a lot of money on details right now on security. It's a lot of money that we're spending right now. So we may need to relook at that. But I'm in totally agree, disagreement 
with this ordinance because you're trying to uh, you're trying to manage uh, protests and people have the right to protest. I understand that's what people if y'all want to do that, but I'm just saying for me as a trustee, I'm just in complete disagreement with this trust with this ordinance. May I respond to uh, the trustee mayor? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, no one is trying to stymie the um, exercising of anyone's rights. Um, and that is one thing that I said twice, that this ordinance in no way stops anyone from protesting. Yes, of course, people have a legal right to protest. That's if we, if we didn't want that to happen, then that would be something wrong with us. We want people to be able to exercise their rights. However, the police department does not staff with extra people just in case something happens. There is no time on the police department schedule where we have extra people on the schedule. What happens is when these protests or any type of assembly pop up, we have what we have. And sometimes that may be only four officers for a crowd of 30, 35 people. That is unsafe. That is unsafe. If anything should occur, how do we protect the protesters, first of all, and how do we protect anyone else or, or the citizens or any participants who may be against the protesters and things start? So it's not that we want to stop the protesters. Yes, we want people to exercise their rights. However, we just want to make sure we have a safe number of police officers to address anything out there. It's the police officers that have to stand out there and be uh, engaged with this crowd. Anyone else can stand off and be safe in the distance. It's the officers' lives who are at stake here. And we just want to make sure no one gets hurt. I have a question, Chief. This is Trustee Brown. You say that there are some surrounding uh, communities with such a thing in place. Do you know where that I could possibly look up their information or something? I'll do some research. More. What, okay. what, what I was saying was I'm not aware of any surrounding communities around us, but I will do some research for you and I can get that information to you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Chief, um, Chief, I got a question. Yes. Yes. Um, I just want to make sure what, what, what we're um, about to go on. We, we're saying that if we uh, vote for this ordinance, if, if in the event that the protest the protesters um, does not pro properly or does not come and um, speak with the police department within the five day period or within that time frame, if they were to protest, uh, they'll be locked up or imprisoned. No, there there's no locking up of people. What the ordinance does provide for, if there is a violation, there is a fine anywhere between two hundred and not to exceed one thousand dollars for the offense. So there is no in custody type of arrest for this. Um, so basically, it is just a ticketable offense, and we ask the assembly or the person who is the organizer to not have the protest until they notify us within the time period. Okay, but but you said legally, um, who will we speak with in regards to if this is legal or not? Did you who did you say we would speak with? Uh, that would who be should... that would be our village attorney or anyone else that they may get a legal opinion from. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thank you so much, Chief. Yes, ma'am. Can I be recognized? Go ahead. Um, I just have a quick question because you stated in this, um, in your overall uh, summary that, that you want, they want five days, but they have to get a permit. What type of permit would it be? And right now, just on uh, general permits, it takes normally three to five business days and they have the right to deny permits. So, and I'm not trying to be in any kind of way throwing shots, but you can just say every time somebody decides they want to protest, have a peaceful protest, if you did not a permit, then they're not there, Luke, they're not going to be able to do it, which I feel is unfair. May I address that, Mayor? Oh, yes. Okay. The wrong button. Yeah, go ahead. So going by the letter of the proposed ordinance, there is no section in there that says a person has to pull a permit in order to have um, an assembly. But what it does say in the ordinance is in paragraph two on page four, such public assemblies shall be allowed unless the police chief notifies in writing, by mail, fax, or email the person or organization giving the notice within two days, business days, after receipt of the notice of the public assembly, or soon as practicable before the scheduled event. So it's not that somebody's requesting a permit and they get a no. They can have the assembly. Let's say they notify the chief of police we're having a gathering at XYZ location on this date and time. If no other action is taken by the village, then they are allowed to have that protest. Unless a public safety issue arises or unless another scheduled event is taking place in the place that they have requested. Okay, thank you, Chief. I, um, just one last statement where you said, and less public safety. And the reason that I'm about to make this statement is because I have a problem with something that's going on. Um, when the meeting, a meeting that was held last week, the streets was blocked off. The, the village hall was barricaded, and I don't know how many people were out there protesting, but as a regular citizen, not even an elected official, 
for the streets to be blocked off, the barricades and stuff. For one, it's a horrible look. If somebody is protesting and nobody has been physically harmed or whatever the case may be, then the right to protest, because you're saying that they can give you a notice of two days or more, and if the village don't say nothing, then it's fine. But the village come back or administrator or mayor or whoever makes the decision to come back and say, oh, we have another event or we don't have a man, whatever the case or excuse may be, then the actions of them peacefully protesting within those two days happen, then what happens? <laughs> May I address this, Mayor? Go ahead. Okay. The Village of Dalton has an ordinance in place that disallows the disruption of a public meeting or a public open air meeting. So regardless if you're a protester or just a resident, you are not allowed to disturb a public meeting or an open air meeting. That is an ordinance that is on the books and has been on the books for a few years. So no protester can disrupt a meeting that is taking place that is put on by the village or put on by even if yourself, trustee, you had a meeting scheduled, no one can come and disrupt that. That would be against our ordinance. So yes, we are allowed to enforce that ordinance. Okay, thank you, Chief. I would just love for you to uh, pull that ordinance at your convenience, okay, and email it to me. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, um, is there a motion to approve um, an ordinance regarding public assembly for the village of Dawson? Okay, no one wants to motion it. Okay. Okay. Good guys. I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down.